uh, happy Christmas Eve. So um, this lecture is going to be about programming basics because several of you asked for this. Now, I want to uh, present a number of disclaimers. I actually woke up just about 20 minutes ago. Um, and the reason I'm doing this like this is because the way I felt this morning, I said, if I do not make this lecture right this minute, there's a strong possibility that I will not make it. Okay. So that's why I'm literally just out of bed. Okay. Um, the second thing is my children are home with me today. So it's possible that there may be some interruptions. So if that happens, please just bear with me because, you know, motherhood comes first. Okay. Um, so today we're going to talk on programming basics. Now I went through that whole page that you all have in your study guide. And I noticed that the examples that they are giving, they are giving for C and I believe Python and I forget the third language. Okay. Now I am not, um, I am not well versed in any of those languages. The languages that I'm going to use for this demonstration is going to be either JavaScript or Ruby. Okay. So, uh, as a result of that, some of the things in that study guide <clears throat> are not going to apply to what I'll be showing. So I'm not going to cover everything. Okay. I'm going to cover the parts that I think it will be helpful to see a practical demonstration of it to help your understanding. Okay. That's what I'm going to cover, but I'm not going to go through that whole page word for word. All right. So I encourage you to still read through and do your best to, <clears throat> excuse me. I've been recording a lot of lectures, so my voice might be a little scratchy. Do your best to understand what they are presenting in that page. All right. But I'm not going to cover every little thing. I'm just going to focus on those parts that I think if you see visually what is happening, it can help you to understand. Okay. All right. So let's go to my desktop. Okay. So you should see my head in the top right corner. Okay. So this is, uh, this is what you all are working with right here. Okay. And we are starting with, okay. So this is the basics page. Okay. So this is all what we are going to go through together. But like I said, I'm not going to go through every single one of these. And I've also changed the order a little bit to an order that I think makes sense. Okay. So I'll let you know which section, you know, that we are looking at. Okay. So these are the three um, languages that this um, page deals in C, Java, and Python. I'm not versed in any of them. So on this side, I'm going to be using Ruby if it makes sense. And I'm going to be using JavaScript if it makes sense. Okay. All right. So um, let's start with a programming environment. Um, programming environment is just basically the, the environment, um, say in your device, in your laptop, most likely laptop that you are using to, um, write your code. So to write code, you use a text editor. Okay. So like, for example, on this, on this side of my screen, I'm using an online text editor and also compiler. Okay. It's doing it online for me. Um, I, I don't think you need to, you know, focus too heavily on this section. Um, just understand that just because you are writing in a language, sometimes depending on the language. And I think they talk about it. Um, they talk about how, um, there are some languages that need to be compiled, you know, so what that is just talking about is, you know, sometimes you have to do some things to the code you have written so that it can be understood and processed by the, um, computer itself. Um, so that, that is really what we are talking about when we say compiler and interpreter. Okay. Now how it works exactly is, um, how it works exactly is more computer science in my opinion. Um, so I think for this section, you just need to be aware of, you know, I like this, uh, diagrams that they have drawn, you know, computer program file. That is the file that contains your code. And then you have, you know, it compiles and 
the result of the compilation is a computer binary file and binary is you know the ones and zeros that is what that is the language that computers understand everything we code and everything we build is always um either uh, explicitly which is you know you you have to do something to start it or implicitly like in the higher order languages like python okay and i believe ruby um the compilation happens automatically all that means is we are just in reinterpreting what you have coded to a form the binary that the computer understands and then the computer is able to execute the program that's what all this means okay same thing with an interpreter okay so it's uh, 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 so okay so you see like python they are giving examples compilation is not necessary there's an interpreter instead that is uh that is um sort of uh, uh rewriting your your code your program into a version that the computer can understand and act on so that's an interpreter so you see there's like an extra step missing okay with compilation there's a, there's a resulting binary file that is now fed to the computer for execution. Whereas with an interpreted language, for example, Python, you have the interpreter and then the computer just executes. Okay. There's no intermediate binary file. That's really what this section is talking about. Okay. All right. So let's move on to, um, uh, basic syntax. Some of these sections, I'm just going to talk through them. Okay. Um, so uh, this is a, a syntax. Now, this is where we are giving a lot of examples in C and Java. Um, syntax just refers to um, how that language represents itself. Okay. So like, for example, in Nigeria, we have Yoruba, we have Igbo, you know, we have Hausa, you can say the same thing in these three different languages and on paper, it will look different, even though they are saying the same thing. So that is what is syntax. Okay. A language syntax is how does that particular language communicate? How does it get certain things done? That's really what syntax is. Okay. So like, let me try and think of an example. Um, like in JavaScript, if I want to create an array in JavaScript, um, in JavaScript, okay, no, not an array. If I want to create a variable in JavaScript, I need a keyword, okay? So there are three keywords that you can use to define a variable in JavaScript. You can use var. So let's say I want to create a variable, um, I want to create an array, a variable that is an array of numbers. So I can say var numbers is equal to one, two, three. Okay, I can also say const numbers is equal to one, two, three. Okay, and I can say let numbers is equal to one, two, three. Okay, so these, these are three ways that you can define a variable called numbers in JavaScript. Okay, in Ruby, you don't need a keyword. Okay. So in JavaScript, you have these keywords, var and const and let, okay? In Ruby, you don't need a keyword. In Ruby, you just say numbers is equal to one, two, three, okay? So all four of these code, all four lines are doing the same thing. They are creating a variable numbers that is an array of three numbers, but the syntax is different. The JavaScript syntax for doing that is different from the Ruby syntax, okay? I feel like that's enough, okay? That's syntax. So much of this page is just giving you examples of how these three languages, you know, what their syntax looks like, you know? It's talking about semicolons, like, you know, uh, statements you are making in the code in some languages, you have to end your statement with a semicolon. The semicolon lets the computer know, okay, this statement has finished. Okay. The reason why I don't think you need to get so deep into this is because this is what you're entering the school to learn. Okay. In my opinion, uh -huh. but you can read through. I think the key thing to keep at the back of your mind is just 
each language has its own way of doing things, of representing things. Okay, that's the key. All right, let's move to data types. Okay, so data types, um, I'm not going to spend too much here. Again, they are giving different examples for the different languages. Um, data types is just different, different forms that data can take. Okay, in the, in the, in the language. All right. So like, for example, they have here for C and Java, they have character, they have number, then there's an idea of small number, long number, decibel, de decimal number. It's just a way of representing certain types of information. I'm not going to spend long here because when we get into the later sections, we are going to be dealing with different data types and you will see them in action. Okay. So this page is just, that's what this page is talking about. And um, in Python, it says, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the data types are different. You have numbers, string, list, tuple, dictionary. In JavaScript, you have integer, string, um, uh, uh, integer string i'm not so <laughs> javascript is not my strongest language in ruby we have integer string symbol uh-huh so different languages have different data types that you can use to represent data that's what a data type is 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 a way of representing a certain type of data okay all right so let's move on to numbers okay uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm doing numbers. Even, so I'm going out of order in a way that I think is, is necessary. Okay. So, um, this, uh, page is just discussing numbers, the way the different languages take them. Okay. So, um, again, this is C, Java and Python. I'm not so well versed on them. Okay. Um, I think you can just read through. It may not make a whole lot of sense, even for me, because I'm not versed in these languages. This didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, but just in general, you have, like I know in, um, I know in um, JavaScript. Okay, so let me, in JavaScript, you have what are integers. Okay, so you have different number types. So you have an integer and an integer is a whole number. Okay. So like if I say, if I console log three, okay, for example, and I run that, okay, we get three. Um, but we also have what is called a float and a float is a number with a decimal. All right. Because in our mind, you know, in our brain, we can just compute, you know, whether it's a whole number, whether it's a decimal, whether it's a fraction, it makes sense to us, but a computer is not like our brain. Okay. A computer is actually much less intelligent than the human brain. And so there, there are different ways that you need to represent numbers for the computer to understand what you mean. So if I now say 3.0, if I say console log 3.0 and I run, okay, we get three. So it's, even though I, I put it as a decimal, it has made it like a whole number, an integer. Um, if I say uh, like 0 0.5, okay, and I say run. Okay, so that's JavaScript. I'm not sure if Ruby is different. Let me see. Um, this is more computer science, you know, than actual coding. So it's not my strongest point. So let me see. If I put the number three in Ruby, in the console, okay, sorry, it needs to, um, it needs to update the package configuration. Okay. All right. So I get three, sorry, it's really small. I, I don't know how to make it bigger than that. I'm sorry. It get I get three. If I put 0 0.5 and I run that, I get 0 0.5. Okay. So the higher level languages, it may be doing some things under the surface, but what is outputted will basically make intuitive sense, but not all languages are like this. And that's really what the point of this page is. Even though I feel it's very computer science heavy, but it's just trying to send the message that, you know, an integer, which is a whole number is going to be, uh, is going to be handled different than a number with a decimal point like 0 
Okay, aha. I hope that makes sense. You can read through and I think it will it will make sense. Okay. Uh let's see. Programming characters. This is again it's computer science. Uh it's just talking about how to define a character in the different languages okay so this is different from a number or an integer this is like um like if you want to like uh, put the letter a for example let me let me give an example um let's say in, in javascript okay if i console log my name okay let me clear if i console log my name aha uh -huh, it says reference error arit is not defined okay because I meant this as a word, but JavaScript is not interpreting it as a word. Let me even remove my name. Let me just use letter A. Okay. So if I run, if I want to print to my console, that's what console log is. If I want to log something to my console and I run A, it will say reference error A is not defined because I meant it as a letter A, but the computer is not interpreting it like that so for 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 the computer to interpret it the way i want i have to make it a character by putting quotes around it okay so if i run that now i'm going to get back a and you can see it has the quote okay so now it knows okay this is character a to me oh that is the summary of i mean there are some other things that they are doing they are talking about escaping characters so escaping a character is um is a way to change the way okay let me give an example here okay so let's say i want to console log um two sentences okay so i want to say arit is teaching okay that's one sentence and she she just woke up okay now, let's see how that is going to look in the console. Okay, you see how it's all on one line. Okay, if I make this a little bigger, you'll see. Aha, it's all on one line. Okay, but what if I don't want it to be all on one line? What if I want it to be on two separate lines? Okay, there is a special character, an escaped character that I can add to my code, which is backslash N. N stands for new line. Now, if I just put N, okay, if I just put N, it's not going to work. It's just, it will just print the N that I put, okay? And it's still all on one line. The two statements are on one line. But if I add a backslash to the N, okay, at least I hope, oh, no, no, no. Ah, uh, will it work? I'm not sure. Let me see. JavaScript can be funny. Aha, uh -huh, okay. By adding a backslash to the end, I have told the I have told the, the computer to put the put what follows the backslash n on a new line. That's what I've told the computer. Whatever follows this backslash n, put it on a new line. Let me prove that to you. That is whatever follows it. If I move my backslash n and I put it after just, okay. And I run that, you'll see what happens. You see? You see? The 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 part of the sentence that is on a new line is the... Uh, I say work up. <laughs> work up. <laughs> you know, the part of the sentence that is on the new line is only the part that came after the backslash N. So that's what... That's an example of what they are talking about in escape sequences on the page. Okay. All right. And they are giving, you know, this is what is available in C programming. You know, I'm not sure if these are available in JavaScript or Ruby. Again, it you know, it really depends on the language. But that is really what they are talking about. And then they just go through and talk about characters in Java, characters in Python. You know, you can read through it. But I think what I've demonstrated is the point is that a character. There's a way you have to represent a character for the computer to recognize it for what it is, okay? All right, now let's go to arrays um, because that is part of the list. Okay, so arrays, an array is a way of storing um, a set of information, okay? 
is storing a set of information. That's the best way I can describe an array. Okay, is storing a set of information. So let's go through one second. Yes, Judah. You want water? Okay, come and get water. Okay, so it's storing a set of information. Okay, um, and I like the example they gave here. Okay, it says consider a situation where we need to store five integers. Okay, uh, do we want to, you know, store them all in a variable? Well, if it is five, we can create five variables. But what if we need to store five thousand? Are we going to create 5,000 variables? Okay, so that's the power of an array. An array allows you to store a set of information in one variable, as opposed to having a separate variable for all that information that you are storing. Okay, and an array is a very powerful um, data structure, uh, you know, a data structure. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, you know, you can read through uh, what they wrote here. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this creating array, um, initializing, you know, some languages you have to initialize an array. The languages that I'm using, you don't need to do that. Um, and then we're going to look at how to access array elements. I'm going to show that to you. Um, and then they are just showing array in Java, array in Python. Okay, so let's go through that. So the creating of the array, and I'm going to do it both in JavaScript and Ruby. So let's say we want to create an array of animals, okay? So in JavaScript, I'm going to say const animals, animals, okay? And I'm going to say, um, so in, uh, in JavaScript, you, um, an array is square bracket. Okay. Square bracket. So I'm going to say, um, uh, um, an, an antelope. I'm going to say bear and I'm going to say cat. Okay. That's my animals. Okay. And let me copy that. Okay. Let's finish. Let's finish JavaScript first. Okay. So, um, so now if I want to see what that looks like, I can now console log animals. Okay. And when I run that, I get my array. Okay. So it's that simple. I get my array. Okay. Now in Ruby, it's different. It's, it's, uh, it's a little different in Ruby. We don't use a keyword for our variable. So we just put the variable name and we set it equal to what we want it to be. Okay. So I've defined uh, a, a variable called animals and it is an array of three animals. So now I can display it on my console in Ruby. We use puts. Okay. In JavaScript, we say console log. Okay. So I put and I can put animals. So if I put animals and I run that, we get back our array. Now Ruby is different. It will list the content of the array. Okay. You see in JavaScript, it just represent, you know, it just gave us back what we, we coded in Ruby. It will list it, you know, it will list the content as a row. If I want to see it in that same array notation in Ruby, I will say inspect. Okay. So I will put animals dot inspect. And if I run that, I will now get the array notation. Okay. Similar to JavaScript. Okay. So that is creating arrays. We are not initializing in these two languages. Now accessing array elements. Okay. Now in an array. Okay. Like you see here and let me shift it over so that it can be on one line in an array. Each element in the array has a position. This is where the power of array comes in. Each element has a position. Okay. And that position is represented by what we call an index. Okay. An index. What is the index of this element in the array? Okay. Now the index is represented by a number. Okay. And when we are counting position, like when, when, when we are counting index in, in, um, in, in computer science, we always start with zero. Okay. 
So that is different from regular, you know, where we start with one. If, if you want to start counting, you say one, two, three. In computer science, we start from zero. It is zero, one, two, three. Okay. So the antelope, uh, you know, the antelope um, element in this array is at index zero. Okay. The bear is at index one. Okay. The cat is at index two. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. Um, Let's see what that looks like, uh, you know, how we can use that to retrieve information from our array, okay? So let's say I want to know which element or which animal, because it's an animal's array, which animal is at index 2, okay? So the way I do that is I put the array name, this is JavaScript now, I put the array name animals and then in square bracket, I put the index number, okay? And so when I run that, I get back cat. Okay. So that is how you access an array element in JavaScript. Okay. That's important to know in JavaScript. That is how you access an array element. It's very similar in Ruby. Okay. If I want to access the third. What? Okay. Go and eat it now. Don't disturb mommy. Okay, so if I want to do the same thing with Ruby, I want to access the element in the third position, I will say animals square bracket two. Why is it two? Because we are counting from zero. It's zero, one, two, okay? Not one, two, three, okay? So I say that, let me clear and run. And if I run that, I will get back cat, okay? So that is in Ruby. That is accessing array elements, okay? We use the index. We use the index number, okay? So they are just giving examples here, okay? And then they just continue, you know, with array in the different languages, okay? So I'm going to stop there. After array, we have strings. So let's see what is in strings. Okay. Um, okay. So this is talking about, um, you know, the need to store more than one character in a variable. Okay, more than one character in a variable. Um, and you know, again, it's talking about C programming. You know, it keeps giving examples in these languages that you've chosen. Okay, um, so what they are what they are trying to describe here is that in some languages, a string is an array of characters. <laughs> okay, this is really C heavy. Um, I'm just looking. I'm looking through it. Okay. And it's really, you know, a basic string concept. It's talking about C being, you know, a string is an array of character. Okay. Um, okay. Then it comes, it says now that in Java, instead of uh, representing a string as an array of character, you can just define it directly. And that is true also for JavaScript and Ruby. Okay. You can just define a string. Okay. Um, same thing in Python. Creating strings in Python is as simple as assigning a string using single or double quotes. It's the same thing with JavaScript and Ruby. So let's just look at it, okay? Um, somehow I feel like this um, website, you know, as an introduction is actually quite complex in my opinion, you know, but I'll do my best to break it down. Okay, so a string in JavaScript is just like they said, you put it in quotation marks, okay? All right. So let's say um, a const, let's create a, a string, a, a variable that is a string, and we're going to call it name. Okay. So now we're not doing array anymore. Okay. So I'm just going to make it my name. Okay. So if I console log the variable name, okay, it will give me back the string of my name. Okay. Now, the cool thing about a string is that we can treat it, at least in JavaScript, we can treat it as though it is a collection of characters, an array of characters, okay? So, for example, if I say, if I want to get, let me see if it will work. I'm not sure if this is JavaScript. It might be Ruby. Let me just try, you know? I don't cram these things. I just, I look and I see, okay, can I do it? If I say name zero, which is the first index zero, which is the first character in the string, 
let me see if it works in javascript aha it does okay so the higher level languages even though you can define a string just you know by using double quotes it is possible to make the computer uh, sort of treat that string as an array of characters okay so if this were an array it would be uh, let's say name array if this were an array it would be a r i t okay so by calling name index zero I am almost treating this name variable as though it were an array of characters. But instead of defining, at least in JavaScript, instead of defining it like this, the computer like knows what it is I'm asking. So what it has done is it has split this arid variable into the individual characters and given me the first one. Okay. All right. Um, same thing in, I'm just going to, okay, let me just, so same thing here in Ruby, okay? I'm going to say name and I'm going to say, you know, it's arid, which, which is a string. And so if I put, um, if I put name, it should give me back my name, okay? Arid, okay? But if I put name zero, which is the first character in the string it should give me the letter a aha uh -huh. so ruby is the same okay <sighs> okay all right i think that's enough i'm just looking through what they are doing here yes i think that's enough for strings okay all right um uh we're not going to do keywords even though keywords is there we're not going to do keywords um the next thing I have here is variable. And in a way, we've kind of already started talking about variables, right? Um, we have started talking about variables. Give me one second. Um, okay, forgive me for a second. Um, I need to take a break at this point, but I'm going to come back and we'll continue with variables. Okay, and I'm back. Thank you for uh, bearing with me. All right, so now we are talking about variables. And in a way, we've already been looking at variables as we talked about other topics, okay? So a variable, um, I like how they put it here. A variable is the name you give to computer memory locations where you are storing values. Okay, so that's really it. Like you have stored a value, but you are giving it a name so that you can access it you can use it later so let me show you in javascript okay so if i just say if i if i just uh, say like it's a string if i say arid okay and i run you know nothing happens okay nothing happens okay um i can't access you know that has been stored it has been processed in the system but I can't access it, okay? So it's it's if I if I you know create a variable, okay, and I say variable name equals arid, okay. Now I'm going to run that and nothing happens because I have stored it, but I'm not using it, okay? But now if I say console log, so I'm now I'm using my variable, okay, and I run that. I now get arid. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. I get arid. Um, let me show another example. Um, let me create another variable and I'm going to call it name two. Okay. And I'm going to use my last name. Okay. So I have these two variables. Okay. Now, if I console log, if I console log now, I want to use these two variables and I console log name plus name two okay i'm now i'm going to be able to access those two variables okay so if i run it i get aritamana okay there's no space because we'll, we'll probably talk about that later but the key thing i'm trying to show is that 
because I created variables for this uh, data, for this data, I can access it through the variable name. Okay, I can access it through the variable name. Okay, so that's, you know, you know, that's the purpose of variables. Okay, is to store information, is to store values so that you can use them later. Okay, so this just goes through, you know, creating variables in C, um, you know, store values in variables. That's an important thing too. You can create a variable that does not have a value. Let me show you that in... Um, in, in JavaScript. So let me create uh, a variable called empty val. Okay. And I'm not going to set it equal to anything. I just created the variable. Okay. And so I can console log. I can console log that. Okay. So I can console log empty val. And if I run it, it says undefined because it's undefined. I didn't set it equal to anything. Even though it is a variable, it exists, right? But it's undefined. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is uh, talking about access stored values. We just showed that and it's doing it. It looks like it's doing it in C and then it breaks it down for Java and then I'm sure Python. Okay. So those are variables in Ruby. It's a little different. We don't need a keyword. Okay. So like here we have name. We just say name is equal to Arit. Okay. That's a variable. All right. In Ruby, we can also have an unassigned variable. So if I say name two and I don't set it equal to anything and I put name two and I run that. Okay. So it says undefined local variable. Okay. Undefined local variable or method name two. Okay. Because it's not set to anything right? It's not set to anything. Okay. Now in Ruby, it will come back with this error. If I really wanted an empty variable, I could do this. Okay. In Ruby, you see in JavaScript, it just said undefined in Ruby. It's a little more expectant. It's expecting there to be something. So there's nothing there. It's going to run it as an error. Okay. So in Ruby, if I set it equal to like an empty string, for example, okay. And I'm, I, and I, you know, I put it to my console. You see, it came back as blank. <laughs> it didn't really show anything, but it, it came back as blank. Like it's saying, yes, the variable exists, but there's nothing in it. There's nothing assigned to it. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's variables. Um, let's go now to basic operators. Uh, okay. Uh, where is it now? Basic operators oh operators okay all right so operators um i like what they said here an operator is a symbol that you know tells the computer to perform specific mathematical relational or logic operation okay and produce the final result okay so let's do it in um javascript and maybe ruby and i just stick to javascript this time okay so we have uh, arithmetic okay so arithmetic is plus minus uh, multiply division and there's a fifth one called modulo which i will explain what that means okay and i like how they they put it here okay all right so let's go through that in javascript okay so let me make my screen bigger okay okay and i hope i really hope you can see the uh the text. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Um, editor settings. Let me make it bigger. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. So uh, let's do some mathematics. And at the top here, I'm just going to write it so that I can remind myself. So plus, minus, div divide, um, multiply, multiply divide and then modulo okay so let's use a plus okay so um let's say let's say var a uh, var first is equal to oh you know we can just console log i don't need variables okay so let's console <clears throat> let's console log um some addition okay so we say four plus four okay 
and we expect that to give us eight okay so that was the ad you know that was the plus operator okay uh let's console log um 10 uh minus four okay now you know some people they like to put like extra space you know like to make it more readable um i'm not sure if every language allows you to do this I think with JavaScript is okay. Let me run it and see. Yes, with JavaScript is okay. So some people will put extra space between, you know, you know the uh, the 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 um, how will I say the elements and the operator just to make it more readable. Okay, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so that's ten minus four. Let's uh, see the multiplying. So let's say um, five. Uh, times times seven uh, sorry <laughs> five times seven okay and we run that and we get 35 okay uh, and let's say um, 16 uh, divided by four okay and we run that and we get four okay so it's just basic mathematics okay now let's look at modulo modulo is actually a pretty cool um, operator modulo returns the remainder after a division okay so you you know you you divide two numbers the modulo will return any remainder if there is one from that operator okay so let's go to our 16 divided by 4 okay but instead of divided by 4 i'm going to say 16 modulo 4 okay 16 modulo 4 so 16 modulo 4, if I run that, it's going to give me 0, okay? Why is it 0? Because when you divide 4 into 16, there's no remainder, okay? Now, let's change it. Let's say 16 modulo 3, okay? 16 modulo 3. So if I run that, I'm going to get 1. Because when I divide 3 into 16... Well, 3 goes into 15 five times, and then there's a remainder, okay? That remainder is remainder 1. And so I get back the remainder. That's what the modulo operator does, okay? If I go again, if I say 16 divided by 10, okay? If I divide 10 into 16, 10 only goes into 16 once, and then there's a remainder of 6. So if I run 16 modulo 10, I'm going to get back 6, okay? Now... It's almost like I want to give an example for why modulo can be powerful, okay? And I'm going to do that in JavaScript, and I hope I, hope I don't mess this up. So I'm going to create a function that tells us whether a number is an even number or not, okay? Now, what is the property of, of even numbers? Okay, let's just talk about it first before we create the function, okay? An even number, a number is even... If when you divide it by 2, there's no remainder, okay? So 6 is an even number. If I divide 6 by 2, okay, I get 3 and there's no remainder, okay? So if I do 6 mod modulo 2, if 6 is an even number, 6 modulo 2 should give me 0, okay? And if I run that, I get 0. Compare this to 7, which is an odd number, okay? Whenever you divide an odd number by 2, you always get a remainder of 1, all right? So if I say 7 modulo 2 and I run that, I'm going to get back 1. So the modulo operator is important if we need a function that tells us whether a number is even or not. So why don't we create that function, okay? So I'm going to say function is it even? Okay, let me just say even number, okay, even number, okay, and we're going to take in a number, okay, all right, now in the function, we're going to say return yes, okay, uh, I'm doing this as Ruby, <laughs> sorry, I'm in Ruby mode, okay, so we're going to check, okay, we're going to say if the number modulo 2, so if number modulo 2 is equal to 0, okay? If that number modulo 2 is equal to 0, then we know, we're going to say return 
yes the number is even okay else okay so the else is saying that the number modulo 2 is not equal to 0 else we are going to return no the number is odd okay all right i'm having a little error here oh okay i should do triple equals okay don't worry about that okay all right so this is our function to check for if a number that we pass to the function is even and we are making use of this modulo operator okay so let's console log and we're going to console log the function and we're going to pass in the number 45 okay which we know is an odd number okay so we pass in 45 and we are going to run that and it tells us no the number is odd the reason why it's odd is because when you modulo it with two because it's odd you're going to get leftover of one okay so this is like a practical application for that modulo operator because some people when they learn about it they say okay what is the usefulness of it this is the usefulness of it or one of its uses okay i can put a very large number so that's arithmetic arithmetic <laughs> operators okay then we have relational and in a way we've already kind of seen an example of relational so relational operator is comparison okay it's compare it's comparing at least two um elements okay and it's checking you know these are the different operators so this is and this is different for different languages i'm not going to go so deep into it okay but in general the double uh equals is checking if they are if they are the same um the bang equal is checking if they are not the same and then you have um greater than you have less than yes baby you need a hug okay how are you okay mommy is teaching right now okay i'll soon finish okay then i'll, I'll attend to you okay all right mm, i love you okay. Mm. 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 Okay, I have to teach, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you give me some time? Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, thank you, okay? Okay, all right. Okay, so this is greater than, okay? And this is less than. And then this is checking for greater or equal to. And this is checking for less or equal to, okay? All right, so let me see if I can uh, show that in JavaScript, okay? So if I say, um, if I'm going to change the function. I'm going to say equal to three, okay? And I'm going to pass in a number, okay? So I'm, I'm going to check now. I'm going to say if that number is, okay. So I'm going to check. I want to see if that number is equal to three. So I'm going to say equal if the number is equal to, to three, then I will return yes, the number is, is three, okay? Or I will say no, the number is not three, okay? All right, so I console log that function and I'm going to pass in a number that is not three okay and if i run it it tells me no the number is not three okay if i pass in three okay and i run that it tells me yes the number is three okay and you know i can make this greater than less than you know the whole point is you know comparing um you know comparing a, a two or more um um, elements okay so that's the uh, relational operators um you now have logical operators okay and so um so logical operators um allows they, they allow us to make decisions and when we get to the decision section you'll see what i mean okay so the logical operators they are presenting here is the and you know double and okay and that this will be easier for me. Let me just go through it and then I will demonstrate because when I demonstrate, it's easier. So this is double and, and then this is, this is or. So this is an and operator. This is, and it's, uh, it's connoted by two ampersands. And then you have two pipes 
and this is this is the or operator and then this is called um the bang it's called a bang and it is a not operator so whatever you put after it it negates it okay so let me show it to you uh let me show it to you visually and i think it will really help okay so let me put them up here just to remind myself okay so we have and and then we have our or and then we have our negate the negator okay uh let's see um okay let's say I'm trying to think of a simple example to use and. Okay, let's say we want a function that will run when somebody arrives at the door of the party. Okay, and this function is this function wants to find out if the party guest's name is Linda. And if Linda came with a gift, okay? So, because maybe we have something special for Linda if she comes to the party with a gift. So, we've written a function to figure out, okay, the person at the door, is their name Linda? And do they have a gift? Okay? All right. <laughs> okay, so... We're going to call the function, let me delete what is inside, okay? So we're going to call it the function Linda with gift, okay? And what we're going to pass in is we're going to pass in the person's name and we're going to pass in, it's a data type called a Boolean and a Boolean is either yes or no, true or false, sorry, okay? So we are going to pass in the gift, uh, we're going to pass in the gift status, okay? Okay, so no, no, let, let me, we're going to pass in whether she has a gift or not, okay? So we're going to say gift, okay? But that gift is going to be either true or false, okay? All right, so this is our function. Now, we're going to use our and operator because we need both to be true because you could have many guests that, um, you know, you could have, you know, the Linda that we care about, we know she's going to bring a gift, okay? But you could have a, a guest that, that their name is Linda, but they didn't bring a gift, okay? So also, you can have a guest that brought a gift, but their name is not Linda, okay? So we want to zero in on the Linda that brings a gift, okay? So we're going to say if, okay, name is equal to Linda... So that's the first condition, is that the name of the person has to be Linda. And, okay, and gift is equal to true. Okay? So we have two, and I think, I, I'm not sure if this is how it works in um in javascript but i think so okay this is asking me to put a double a, a triple equals okay so if the name is equal to linda and if the gift is equal to true then we are going to say return our linda is here okay else that means if none of if those two things are not true at the same time else we will say is not our linda okay our linda all right okay okay good so let us use our function and see how it works okay so we are going to uh, call this so this is going to be a situation where uh, the guest is is not linda and they have, you know, and there's no gift, okay? I'm just going to run different scenarios, okay? And then we're going to run the scenario where the guest is not Linda, but they have a gift, okay? Okay, all right. And then we're going to run a scenario where the guest 
does not have a gift, but their name is Linda. Okay. Guess is named Linda. Okay. But there's no gift. Okay. Good. And then we're going to have, <laughs> sorry, we're going to have a final scenario where the guest is named Linda and they have a gift. Okay. All right. So let me, um, comment out, you know, the ones that we are not running so that we run them one at a time. Okay. So let's run Linda with gift, but their name is Mark. Okay. And they don't have a gift. So we say false. Okay. So let's run it. So we run that and we get not our Linda. Okay. Because they failed this condition and they failed this condition. Okay. All right. So we have finished that one. Let's run the second one. The second one is the guest is not Linda, but they have a gift. So let's say this guest is, um, is a uh, Sarah. Okay. And Sarah has a gift. So we say it's true. Okay. All right. And we run that. It's not our Linda. She has a gift. So this condition was met, but this condition failed and our and operator needs both of them to be true. That's the thing with and. Okay. It needs to be name equals Linda and gift equals true. Okay. All right. So let's um, comment that. So let's run a situation where the guest name is Linda, but she does not have a gift. Okay. So we run it and it still gives us back not our Linda. Okay. All right. And now we have the happy path, as we say, where the guest's name is Linda and she has a gift. Okay. And we're going to run that. And it says our Linda is here. So that is the and operator. Okay. Now <laughs> let's use the same function, but we're going to use the or operator. So let's say now um, this, uh, this, um, function is going to check if somebody should be allowed into the party. Okay. Somebody should be allowed into the party. Now let's say for this party, what we care about is we only want people who bring a gift. So you can be anybody, as long as you have a gift, you can come in or your name is John. Okay. Maybe the celebrant's name is John. So he wants to celebrate with people whose name is also John. Okay. So those are our conditions. Either your name is John or you have a gift. Okay. So, um, we're going to call the function allow into party. Okay. And we're checking, we're still checking name and we are checking gifts. Okay. Gift status. Now we are checking the name needs to be John. But we are saying, or the gift need to be true. Okay. So our condition is not joined together. It can be either one of them. Okay. So if the name is equal to John or the gift is present, we can say the function will say, allow them. Okay. Allow guest to enter. Okay. If none of these are true, we are going to say, send guest away. Okay. All right. So let us rewrite our four, you know, our four conditions. So we're going to say the guest, um, guest name. So guest name is not John. Okay. And they don't have a gift. Okay. We're going to say guest name. I'm going to just copy and paste. We're going to say guest name is not John, but they have a gift. Okay. Then we're going to say guest name is John and they don't have a gift. And then we're going to say guest name is John and they have a gift. Okay. And then I'm going to replace the, um, the function name because we renamed the function. 
okay all right so we have mark and it's false okay the guest name is not john sarah true guest name is john so we have to change this and then guest name is john okay all right so let's run each of our scenarios like we did the last one okay so in this case the guest name is mark and he does not have a gift okay so if we run it it says send guest away because mark does not meet any of the criteria okay for entry into the party all right okay now we have sarah okay that has come and she has a gift so we say run it says allow guests to enter because she meets at least one of the condition at least one okay that's the or operator if it were and she would fail if it were and she would fail because she only meets one she doesn't meet the other okay all right and then we come to this one here this person's name is john and he doesn't have a gift and the function allows him to enter why because his name is john even though he doesn't have a gift okay and then this one meets both of the criteria okay and we run it and it says allow guests to enter okay so that is the or operator okay excuse me okay now let's look at the bang operator and some people also call it the negation okay what that does is whatever comes after it it checks for the opposite so let's do it in an example and it will help uh let me think um okay so we are still <laughs> we are still running this party okay but the celebrant has fought with her friend okay and her friend's name is kemi okay now she doesn't want her friend kemi to enter this party so she has programmed the door to the party to check okay if somebody's name is not kemi so as long as the guest name is not kemi they are allowed to enter okay so let's code that so we're still going to call the function allow into party this time we're not checking for gift we only care about the guest name okay and like the celebrant said she only wants people whose name is not kemi so that the kemi that she fought with cannot enter this party okay so we're going to say if if name okay is not equal to kemi okay so if we were checking for guest name whose name was equal to kemi this would be double equal but we want names that are not kemi and so we put the bang before the second equal okay so if the name is not kemi then we are going to say allow guests to enter but if their name is kemi okay which has failed this condition you know that's the difficulty with the with the negation operator is that you have to think like in opposite okay so if your name is not kemi you have fulfilled the condition but if your name is kemi you have failed the condition because the condition is checking for not kemi okay so if your name is kemi you have failed the condition and so you're going to be sent away okay all right so let us uh, change our conditions here so guest name is not kemi and we only need two in this case okay so guest name is not kemi and then here we have guest name is kemi okay all right and we are going to check okay all right so in this case the guest name need an extra the guest name is mark okay so mark comes up to the door we're going to see if he's allowed in okay so we say run he says allow guests to enter because his name is mark okay his name is not kemi and so he fulfilled the condition okay i said allow him to party kemi okay so kemi shows up so because her name is kemi she has failed this condition this condition says you have to be not kemi 
okay? But she's Kemi. And so because she's not Kemi, we say send guest away, okay? Maybe let's go over to Ruby, okay? All right. Let's go over to Ruby. Um, okay, let's do this in Ruby. Okay, Ruby function. Um, okay. Allow to enter. Okay. And I say... Ah! <laughs> Switching from language to language is hard. Okay, so it said uh, we have to, you know, define the method. Allow to enter. Okay. And we say name. All right. And this is end. Okay. So now we are going to say return. Um, um, allow guest in. If name is not equal to Kemi. Okay. And we're going to say return. Okay. We don't need a return. Um, in Ruby, if the first one fails, then we can say send guest away. Okay. So that's Ruby. Okay. So we're going to put, um, allow to enter and the person's name is Mark. And then we are going to put allow to enter and the person's name is Kemi. Okay. So let's console, let's, um, comment that one out and we're going to run our function. Okay. So let's clear the console and we run it. It's updating. Sorry. Okay. So we run it. Okay. And it says allow guest in. Okay. Because Mark is not Kemi. And so it met the condition. Okay. Now I hope Ruby doesn't mess with me. Like it seemed JavaScript was messing. So let's now uh, run the function for a guest whose name is Kemi. Okay. And we run the function and it says send guest away. Okay. So what happened was Kemi failed this condition. So because it failed this condition, it says if, right? So because the condition failed, we are not going to, we are, oh, we are not going to run this line. We are going to run this line instead. Okay. So that is Ruby. I hope that makes sense. I, I really, I hope I'm not confusing people. That's not my goal. Okay. All right. So those were the logical operators that took a while. Okay. And this is just uh, showing the operators in the different languages. Okay. All right. So we are finished operators. Let's move to decision making. And in a way we have already started looking at decision making in our demo. Okay. In our examples. Okay. So you can read through this. I actually think this part of it was written pretty well. Decision making is very, very important in, um, programming because it allows us to do different things with our code, depending on certain conditions. I'm not going to go through it again because in a way we've already seen it in the example that I was using with the operators. Okay. So like in JavaScript, okay, we had this if, Okay. So we are checking conditions. If something do something else, do something else. Okay. That's decision making. Okay. In programming, we are checking for certain conditions and based on if those conditions are met or not met, we do something. Okay. All right. So I think the way they described it here is actually, you know, they have this flow chart, you see? So it says, this is a condition. Okay. If the condition is false, you go like this. If the condition is true, you run the conditional code. Okay. So it just gives you examples, uh, in different, um, you know, like this is if, you know, like exactly like what we did, you see, this is the condition. If the condition is true, you run the if code. If the condition is false, you run the else code. That's what we did here. Okay. If this condition was met, then we ran the code inside that block else. This is the else, you know, else means this condition failed. Okay. So we say else, and then we run this other one here. Okay. All right. Um, and that is, uh, that is, uh, now they have uh, like an if else else, let me do that in JavaScript. Uh, and then they have a switch statement. I will do that in JavaScript as well. Okay. 
and then they just show it in Java, Java and Python. Okay, so let me show the if else else, which is like a deeper, it's like a deeper, uh, that is a, uh, like a two, two, two layers in, okay? <clears throat> Hopefully JavaScript will not fall my hand. Okay, so we are doing if else else, okay? And let me think of a good example. Um, okay, let's say we are writing a function for, um, for, uh, like a car rental company. Okay. And the car rental company wants a function, uh, to decide if somebody should be allowed to rent their car. Okay. All right. So their conditions are that, um, you know, mm, if the person is uh, above 25, okay? So if their age is above 25, okay? Then they can rent, okay? Now, if their age is not above 25, okay? If not above 25, the, the, the company wants to check if they have um, at least uh, 5,000 dollars um deposit to make okay so if they are not above 25 um but uh, and they have five thousand dollars okay then they can rent okay if they don't meet any of those conditions then they cannot rent okay else they cannot rent a car okay so let's create the function <clears throat> oh, okay. So let's create the function and we're going to call it, um, can rent, uh, can, can customer rent. Okay. That's what we're, we are, we are calling it. Uh, no, let's call it a uh, customer can rent. I don't know how to name. Sometimes naming functions can be hard. Um, yeah, let's, let's call it can customer rent okay all right now what we are going to take in is we are going to take in um let me think about this let me think we're going to take in an object okay and that object has age and it has money okay i think this is okay about the structuring okay so we're going to take in an object that has an age and it has money okay so we're going to say if i hope this works <laughs> if age is greater than or equal to 25 okay then we are going to return a yes they can rent okay then we're going to say else if because we're testing a second condition after the first one the first one is the most important as long as you are 25 and above sorry if 25 if 25 and above okay you can rent we're not even going to check your money okay but now you have failed the first condition so we're going to introduce a second condition so else if money is greater than or equal to 5,000, then we return, yes, they can rate, okay? Else, we return, no, do not rent to them, okay? Ah, JavaScript, don't fall my hand. Okay. Um, okay. So let me first see if, let me just test it. Okay. Just give me a second. I want to test it with that object. Okay. So if I say console log and I put an object and I say this person's age is 34 and I say this person's money is 60. Okay. Let's see what I get back. Oh no, console log, sorry. I have to put the function name. Hey. Alright. 
okay i have to put the function name and then i pass in that object okay okay all right so let me run it and see yes okay good all right so the reason i'm using an object is because i want to make it obvious what we are passing in i want to make it obvious to you okay all right so let's set up our conditions let's set up our scenarios okay so let's say we have a customer that is under age um and has and and they they, they have um six thousand dollars okay and then we set up a customer uh that is uh of age okay and they have um uh, $200, okay? And then we have a customer uh, that is uh, under age um, and they have, uh, you know, 5,900 and, uh, sorry, $4,999, okay? So this customer is under age, so we're going to make them uh, 22, but they have $6,000, okay? And then we are going to have this customer is of age. So let's say they are 27 and they only have $200. And then this customer is under age. Let's say he's 20 and he has 4999. Okay. So let's run our three scenarios. So this is just showing you a, 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 a double, uh, like an if else else, like an if else if else okay because that's what they said in the page okay so we run the first one okay and it says yes they can rent because even if they are under age they have more than five thousand okay Mommy, all right yes my love I want cake. there's no cake baby uh -uh, please I'm, I'm teaching okay all right so we run this one the customer is above age even though they don't have enough money and we say yes they can rent okay so that is what we expect now, in this third environment, we have, in this third scenario, we have the age is 20, so they are oh, under age, oh, and they have just one. Cake. I need cake. Okay, my love. I'll get you a snack later. Okay. Cake. 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 All right, go drink your water. Snack. Go drink your water. It's still early in the morning. Okay? I just did. Okay. All right, go watch TV. Okay. All right. Thank you, baby. Okay, so in this case, they are both underage and they have just one dollar less than what they need. Okay, so let's see what happens with them. No, do not rent to them. Okay, because they don't meet any of these conditions. They don't meet the age condition and they don't meet the money condition. Okay, so that is if else, else, you know, if else, if else. Okay, oh, finally, let's go into switch statement. Switch statement is a way of... um. Let me let me uh, explain what switch statements can can do. Let's say you have this same company, okay? And let's say they have, let's say they have four conditions, okay? So their first condition is twenty five and above. Their second condition is if they are not twenty five and above, then they have five thousand. Let's say their third condition is if they don't meet any of those first two conditions. Let's say um, uh, let's say their father knows. Uh, the owner okay so if uh, so so if they okay not, not even their father let's say they themselves if they know the owner okay okay then they can rent okay and then let's say the fourth condition is um um if they like bmw okay if they like uh, bmw then they can rent okay and then else they cannot so Let's code this with the if else. Okay, I want to demonstrate something. All right, so let's code it with the if else. So we have said if age is greater or equal to 25, they can rent. Else, if money is greater, good, they can rent. Okay, um, else if if um, if they know the owner, so if um, if no owner is true, okay, and we need to add it to our object, okay, so if no owner is true, then return, yes, they can rent, <laughs> okay, 
okay and then we have uh and then we have else if you see how it's becoming you know it's becoming almost confusing else if um they like bmw okay and that is true and we have to put it up here like bmw okay so if they like bmw um then uh you know return yes they can rent a hey before we now come to the else uh return no do not rent to them you see how it's it's kind of looking confusing it's so you know imagine now if we had 10 conditions okay so a switch statement is a tidier way of checking multiple conditions okay in javascript and other languages it's a tidier way okay so let us do a switch statement okay. um okay so uh age okay and then what we're going to return is yes they can rent okay so we return yes they can rent and then break okay now we're going to repeat that let's take all our uh it's just not going to be an object but it's it's pretty much the same thing okay all right um and then we are going to also put that here as well okay all right okay 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 so now let's write our different case statements the case statements are now the conditions that need to be met okay all right so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to repeat it three more times okay but there's going to be different conditions so now we're going to take the money condition and we're going to put it here okay then we're going to take the no owner condition and we're going to put it here and then we're going to take the like bmw condition and we're going to put it here okay all right and then the default the default is you know if all these cases fail the default is now what you return when all the cases fail and we're going to return do not rent to them okay so we're going to delete this function right here because we do not need it okay so now we have our switch statement okay so let us call I'm, I'm not going to i'm not going to console log a whole lot okay so let us console log um we're going to console log let me bring it up a little bit so you can see okay so we're going to console log can customer rent and we're going to give um we're going to say the age is um 22 so let's fail the first condition we are going to say the money is 400 let's fail the second one let us pass the third one we're going to say yes he knows the owner and let's fail the fourth one that he does not like bmw okay all right so let's clear and we are going to run i'm sorry it's not running forgive me for that javascript is not my strongest language um but i hope you can see compared to the if else it's more readable okay you have this case you have that case you have that case you have that case and it's more readable you can see kind of what okay what are the conditions that we are dealing with okay and the function will just work it down okay it will work it down and say okay i'm going to keep checking these conditions if they work i will return what i'm supposed to return and then i will break the break means don't run the function anymore okay all right so let's continue <laughs> okay uh oh okay i'm actually going to stop this um lecture here we've been going on for quite a while we have uh a couple more we just finished decision making and actually the only thing we have left is loops functions is there let's go back to our um let's go back to our list okay so um we just finished decision making um i do want us to talk about loops which is here we're not going to discuss file input output i think you, you can just read it 
um, and we're not going to discuss functions because in all the examples that we've gone through, we've been talking about functions already. So I think you can just read that. Um, I'm going to do loops now. And then as you can see, I need to attend to my children. So we are going to have to, I'm going to have to go, but let me uh, just do my best to finish up so that you all have what you need. Let's look at loops. Okay. All right. So we have, um, loops. I said I was going to stop, but I'm not going to stop. Let me just power through and finish so that you have what you need. Okay. All right. So let's look at loops. Now, um, I like how they describe it. Okay. I like how they describe it that um, it says um, uh, it says that um, you want to print hello world five times. OK, and they show you a C program that does that. OK, but they now say consider another situation where you want to write hello world a thousand times. OK, we cannot. That means you will have to write these sentences a thousand times. OK, and it talks about how programming languages provide a concept called a loop. And what a loop is, is it executes one or more statements up to a desired number of times. OK, all right. So I'm going to do this in JavaScript again. <laughs> Hopefully JavaScript will agree with me. I'm going to do it in JavaScript. And I'm, there are different types of loops um, in JavaScript. You have. Um, sorry, let me clear this. Okay, and we can talk about it. Okay, so in JavaScript you have um, you have a for loop. Okay, you have a for loop, and that's the one we're going to look at together. Um, you also have a while loop, and a while loop just means while a condition is still true, do something, and it's when the condition becomes false that you break. And then you have, I think in JavaScript, we have until loop. Okay. So until loop is like the opposite of while loop until loop says until a condition is met, do something. A while loop says while a condition is met, do something. Okay. But we are not going to look at those two. You can look at it on Google if you want. Let's do a for loop. Okay. We're going to do a simple one. Let's say, um, there's, we, we have an array. Okay. Um, we have an array. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's have an array. Okay. Let's call it animals. Okay. Like before. And we're going to say antelope. Okay. We're going to say bear. Okay. We're going to say crocodile. Okay. We're going to say dog and we're going to say elephant. Okay. So that is our, um, uh, that is our, um, array. Now let's say we want to write a function that would take each of those animals and print the statement. This word begins with the first letter of that word. Okay. Like maybe we want to teach some children. Okay. So this, so antelope begins with a, and we want to print those sentences for each of the animals in the array. Okay. So we are going to run a, we're going to run a for loop. Okay. So our function is called, um, 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 word starts with, okay. Let's call it that. And it's going to take in an array. Okay. All right. Now in this array, we are going to say for, do not worry about the syntax. I just want to show you what it is. Okay. I'm showing you what a for loop is. Okay. So we're going to say for, um, I equals zero. Okay. And then, um, I is less than array length and then i plus plus okay now i need to i need a keyword here let i equal zero okay i 
don't know what your problem is. I don't know why I'm getting... I don't know why I'm getting... Uh, okay. I hope... Let's just see what happens. I might have to change to another... I don't know. Okay, so for let i equals don't worry about this syntax okay what this is just saying what this statement is saying that we're going to start at the beginning of an, our array and while the index we are looking at is less than the size of the array we are going to uh we're going to increment we're going to go from you know from one element to the next one that's all that is saying okay so and then we are going to return um no we're going to console log we're going to console log, um, uh, and this is what we're console logging. Um, we're going to console log um, our, uh, ah, JavaScript oh, array, uh, uh, no, I, okay, <laughs> whatever that is, array I um, starts. Let me not use that notation because it's complaining too much. Array I um, starts with, okay, array I starts with array I, I, okay, the first letter, okay, okay. And we're console logging that. Okay. Ah, let's see if it works. Okay. So now I'm going to console log the function. Okay. Starts with. And I'm going to pass in animals. Okay. I pass in animals. So I call the function. Now, there's. it seems like we're having some, some errors here. But I don't know if it's just... Okay. I mean, this makes sense to me, but uh, let's see. Let's run it and see. Okay, I has already been declared. I want to use this for loop, so it needs to be JavaScript. I could do this in Ruby, but Ruby doesn't have the for. Um, okay. I like the internet. Ah, I see my mistake. I'm using comma. <laughs> it needs to be semicolon. Ah. Okay. Okay. I'm like, what is going on? Okay, okay, we are we are in business. Okay, I hope so. Okay, I was using the wrong. You know, syntax is so important. I'm I'm using the wrong. I was using the wrong. Um, you know, the wrong uh, symbol to indicate. You know, the end of this data. Okay, all right. Let's see. So let's run it and see. Okay, so we are missing a. We are missing a closing bracket. after argument list excuse me everyone let me just look okay i have that okay and i have that is closed and i have that is closed and i have i have that is closed is it let me try this with the um oh um it needs to be a dollar sign okay ah <sighs> This video is long, yeah? Okay. Let's see. Console log. 
Yeah, you, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't recognize. But why is this? It's saying it's unmatched. I don't understand why it is saying it's unmatched. Okay, let me return it. Maybe the console log is the problem. Okay, so let me return it. And, uh... Ah, okay. Right? Okay, do we have any more complaints? Okay, I'm returning the statement. Uh, I don't know why you're saying I'm missing a semicolon. I think my syntax is yeah. correct. Okay, not yet, baby. I'm almost done, okay? Okay, but because I said return. Okay, so let me return to... Return is short-circuiting. Don't worry, I'm going to explain myself. Uh, console log. I'm going to console log it like I was doing before. Um, uh Programming is not easy. And now it's complaining that I have an unmatched. And I, I don't think I do. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. So, we have looped through. Why is it telling me crocodile starts? Oh, 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 mistake. <laughs> it is well okay i meant to be i meant this to be the first letter of the array item that we are on okay so let's dial back okay now that i have solved <laughs> all my bugs and errors okay so we have our um our array called animals okay and what this function is doing is it is looping through each of the elements in the array and it is telling us that this element starts with whatever the first letter is, okay? So that is what this four is doing. The four is saying we're setting i equal to index zero because we want to start with the first element in the array, okay? So the, the index is zero. And then we this second part here is saying that continue increasing i until i is... That, that is, you know, as long as i is less than the length of the array. Now, what is the length of this array? The length is 5. But remember, with index, we count from 0. So this last element is going to be index 4. So the last index will always be less than the length of the array. Okay? The length of the array is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But the last index will always be less than... Than the length of the array. The length is 5, the last index is 4. So this condition is saying as long as i remains less than the length of the array, increment it by 1 with every cycle. That's the loop, okay? We're setting up a loop, okay? That's what that means. And for each cycle of the loop, we want to console log the word that we are on which is the array i, then we want to say it starts with, and then we're, we're taking the first letter of that element, okay? That's the explanation of the function. So I call the function with the array of animals, and that's why we got what we got. Antelope starts with A. Bear starts with B. Crocodile starts with C. Dog starts with D. Elephant starts with E. We, we have produced these five sentences with one function, okay? We didn't have to console log. We didn't have to write five console logs for each of the words, okay? We just put the words in an array and we ran a for loop on that array and we got what we got. Okay. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you so much for bearing with me. Um, I apologize if this lecture was not like the other lectures, but I really felt like if I didn't do it uh, when I woke up, then I wasn't going to do it at all. So I hope this was helpful. Um, yes, if you have any questions about what we covered, you can ask in the Slack. 
I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but like I always say, keep your head down, keep studying, trust your ability to learn. Okay. Sometimes when you don't understand something, it can be easy to panic and start getting afraid, but you know, try to, um, try to calm yourself. Okay. And put your fear aside and just keep exposing yourself to the material. Keep asking questions on Slack, you know, lean on your channel mates to help you. And eventually it will start to make sense. All right. So I'll see you in. Six.